So what exactly might happen come June 30th? For more on that, we turn now to Manuela Tobias, who just joined the great team over at Cal Matters. Manuela, welcome to your new post and welcome to Inside the Issues. Thank you so much. I'm happy to be here. Can you give us just kind of a quick crash course on how we got to this point in time, this big June 30th date? Because honestly, no one has been entirely sure when the pandemic will be truly over. So how did officials set this June 30th date for, OK, here's when the eviction moratorium is going to expire? There have been multiple eviction protection extensions since the governor first issued an eviction ban on March 27th, 2020, back at the start of the pandemic. And each extension has was designed to last a few months so that legislatures, legislators could check back in on how people were doing. Um, and as we know, the pandemic was defined by uncertainty, and these eviction protections have been no different. This June 30th date was set back at the end of January, and now that it's about to expire, legislators are once again having to reevaluate how it's going and what people need. Yep, and and uh, the extension of the eviction moratorium that was passed by LA County's Board of Supervisors this week, it covers commercial evictions, no-fault evictions, it prohibits ousting tenants for unauthorized occupants, pets, other things like that. Uh, by all accounts of it, the LA County supervisors were really concerned about protecting both tenants and landlords, trying to fold everyone into the conversation. What about the dialogue that's been happening in Sacramento at the statewide level? Have these two camps really been able to participate in the conversation? These conversations have been very much uh, sort of shrouded in secrecy. I am having a hard time even figuring out what's going on reporting on this issue. Um, so we were supposed to, they were supposed to have a deal back in um, last week that got pushed to this Monday. Nothing was decided. Tenant and landlord groups are frustrated that they haven't been included, but that hasn't stopped them from trying to influence the conversation, putting in calls, holding press conferences, and pushing for what each side wants. Yeah. And as you mentioned, a lot of this has been shrouded in secrecy, but as you also mentioned, like the days are running out. There is not much of June left. Do you have any sense, Manuela, if in fact they do decide to extend the statewide moratorium, how much further it might go? What landlord groups are pushing is for as little time as possible. And so they um, have been pushing at the latest for September. And on the other hand, you've got tenant groups wanting to extend for um, through the end of the year because so little of the rent relief available has gone out. So this is the, the key talking point is how are the billions of dollars available for rent relief going to go out? And both parties really want that um, date to sort of hinge on that money. Um, but tenants, tenant groups are sort of pushing this idea that it's going to take a lot more time than is available. Landlord groups are saying the protections should only really be extended to those who are actively um, trying to get those funds and uh, be protected by by that as well. Yeah. And we've had the good fortune of speaking with your colleague at CalMatters, uh, Nigel Duara, about the, the complexities and the real challenges of there is a lot of money out there for rental relief, but it's had a hard time getting out the door. Manuela, in your reporting, you've been looking at who has been applying for this assistance, who's actually getting it. Can you kind of just walk us through what we know at this point in time, in point in time about who's getting the help and who is not getting the help. Since January, the state has been sitting on $2.6 billion of rental assistance. And there's another $2.6 billion um, available from the federal government. Of that money, the state handles about $1.4 billion. And only $50 million has gone out to people. So a tiny fraction of what's available has actually reached renters. Um, people have applied for around 619 million as of late last week. A lot of the money that's available hasn't even been applied for. Um, and so what tenant groups have been um, pushing for is to make the application simpler. The current application takes um, hours to complete. Um, 
and was only available in a couple languages. What the state has now done is um, lowered the documentation requirements, made the application easier, faster, and made it available in more languages. And they're already seeing some success with that, but those changes have only been implemented last week. So there is going to be a lot more to be seen on whether the current changes to the application are helping and what lawmakers need to do to make that even more accessible. Yeah, because the results of all this is, is uh, you've got some great graphs on CalMatters that show it seems like there is, in terms of who's receiving assistance, there are some real racial inequities there, right? Right, so the data that we have is on who has applied for the rental assistance, um, not for who has received it. But anecdotally, what we know is it's been the hardest for people without much access to this information, to uh, digital, digital access, um, and and just uh, access to documentation that will really help prove their case. The people that the state is most trying to help are the ones that are struggling the most to access this, and that's what lawmakers really want to try to address right now. And Manuela, we talked earlier about these eviction moratoriums, and I think people hear that sometimes and they think that nobody is getting kicked out of their apartment, but that isn't necessarily what's happening. Tell me what you've been hearing and seeing about people who are being forced out even though these protections are in place. What tenant advocates are telling us across the state is that people are still facing evictions. Um, so the moratorium, it's called that, but because it doesn't necessarily prevent from every type of eviction, um, tenants uh, caution against using that term. So it protects against uh, non-payment of rent, but not against every type of eviction. So um, people can still be evicted over uh, big renovations in their apartments. There's also informal evictions where tenants are um, told by their landlord that they need to leave. And while it might not, while they might be protected by the law, a lot of tenants don't know those rights. Yep, and, and if, so if you don't why. know, then that protection only goes so far. We're gonna be looking at that soon on this program. Manuela, thank you so much for your reporting. We really appreciate it. Thank you for having me.